Yeah, so Frio this weekend, a uh, pretty good challenge for the guys. Yeah, it is. You know, they're a good footy club, they're a good footy team and they've played some outstanding footy. You know, they've got terrific system in how they play and, um, you know, we're certainly preparing for their best. You know, they clearly they've played in some tough conditions the last couple of weeks and, um, you know, we're looking forward to, to playing you know, for our men at their best and, and it should be a really good game. Yeah, and they have been down the last couple of weeks, as you mentioned, Are you expecting just the sort of form that they were showing in the first six to eight weeks. Oh, I think when anyone's you know gets challenged, um, whether that be as a footy club or individually, you expect a response, and you know that's what we're expecting from Fremantle. You know they're a good footy team, they've got great system, they're well coached, and they've got some really talented players. So we're certainly expecting them to be at their best, and you know we welcome that challenge. We're looking forward to it. It's you know our players have so looked forward and have been really looking forward to this this game especially. Personnel-wise, Simon, will, um, will Viney get up for this weekend? Yeah, Vines is raring to go. He was knocking on the door on Monday. Um, you know, he's, uh, it was a little bit tight in the hamstring heading into last week's game, so we didn't want to risk him. But, you know, come Monday, he was raring to go and he'll train fully today. And, um, you know, we're expecting him to be suiting up. And Langdon as well, um, not quite as serious an injury as what you initially expected? No, it was good news for Langers. You know, we just wanted to really make sure internally everything was okay. But, um, you know, he's getting better day by day. So we're going to give him right up until game time. We'll give him a good test uh, over the next few days and, and see where he's at. But we certainly won't take a risk with him. Um, if he's sore at any stage, we, we, we won't play him. But, you know, he's progressing well over the last 48 hours. How hard is it at selection at the moment? You've got nearly a full uh, spot to choose from. You've got guys coming back in. How hard is it to try and pick that best 22 each week? Yeah, look, it's tough in a whole range of areas and it's you know going to get tougher over the next few weeks. You know, We've got obviously Jack Viney coming back this week. We've got James Harms and Christian Salem and Michael Hibbard coming back next week. Um, so we've got a range of guys that are certainly going to come back into selection calculations and we've got a lot of guys internally playing some really good footy at VFL level. So it puts a lot of heat on the guys that are currently in the team to continue to execute their role and, and perform strongly for our footy team. And ultimately, from a selection perspective, we as coaches look at how cohesive um, our team can be together as one. Um, ultimately, it's the sum of all parts coming together. So we'll continue to pick guys that help the team they operate well together and um, you know, that continues to put heat on a lot of guys. With Salem and Hibbard, do you look to put them back through the VFL or you just wait and see how they, they're tracking? Yeah, we'll wait and see um, you know, how they train over the next few weeks. You know, Hibbo would have played this week, but the VFL have got a buy, so he would have played some VFL footy. So um, we'll wait and see how they perform over the next few weeks, see how the team's functioning. Um, you know, there's still a lot of things that we need to work through before we get to that situation. So we'll assess that as we go. But obviously, it's great to have two experienced players that haven't played a lot of footy this year coming back into uh, calculations for us. How close are you to playing um, the perfect brand of football that you that you want to be, Simon? Do you still feel that there's areas that you can that you can sharpen? I mean, from the outside, it looks like you guys are pretty pretty bulletproof at the moment. Yeah, look, we don't seek perfection by any stretch. Um, what we seek is a, is a brand of footy that stands up, you know, at the back end of seasons uh, when it really counts. And we're continuing to evolve our game to a position where we're comfortable in that space. Um, what I do love about our team at the moment is we, we do rock up and play the same way every week at the moment from a defensive and contest perspective, and that's really important for us. But you know, we, we still look for ways we improved as a coaching group um, you know, we review some things really strongly from the weekend's game that we think we can improve on and get better and continue to make our game better. So, um, you know, we'll, we'll go to work today at training, see if we can implement them and, and find a way to continue to get better. But as I've said a lot, we're, we're simply not the finished product by any stretch. We think we've got improvement in us. But as I said, I'm really proud of the way the players are going about their game on a week-to-week -week basis. It's a, it's a tough industry to win in and one we need to continue to respect and um, you know, value what we do from, from week to week. I just get to ask your thoughts on, on the umpiring at the moment. Do you feel there's been too many frees being paid and is there somewhat of a, a disconnect between the, the players and, and, and the officiators? I think when we headed into this year, I think one of the, the key things that we wanted as an industry was we, we recognised that there is a shortage of umpires. Um, and it was an, in, uh, an area that, as an industry, that we were going to help to get better. So the players really embraced in respecting 
umpires and, and changing the way that we go about that so we can continue to get young people into umpiring and continue to increase the quality of our umpiring. But you know, I'm a bit disappointed this week that we get to a situation where everyone's now in a position where we're going to be quite negative towards the umpires. Um, I think we have to be really careful as an industry that we don't go down that path and we continue to respect and, and want our young people to get into umpiring. And uh, I think we all play a role, whether that's players, coaches, um, administrators, media. I think we all play a role in making sure our industry thrives and, and I think umpiring is one of those. What do you think a fix is, Simon? Obviously, there's been a lot of discussion this week and, yeah, the, the AFL has brought in rules for the players and it, it seems to be working okay and the players have been, um, yeah, better um, with, yeah, without showing dissent to the umpires. Yeah, look, I haven't got a solution for you. Um, hopefully Brad Scott and everyone at the AFL House and I are working incredibly hard to, to provide the best game they can, whether that be from a playing perspective, umpiring a whole industry perspective. So um, th those people are working incredibly hard to, to really make our game the best it can possibly be, and I'll back those people in. And the second week, the, the club's going as NAM, um, and you're back at the MCG. How important is that for the, the club? Um, back in front of your supporters at the, the G? Oh, it's great. You know, obviously, Nam, you know, it's our second week this week, and obviously, it's about raising the education and conversations within our community. But to do that in front of our home crowd at the MCG, it's going to be a pretty special moment for our footy club, but also for our Indigenous players to really be involved in and really get in behind as well. So, um, we're looking forward to it. You know, we loved it last week, and, and I'm sure the players will embrace it again this week. Have you noticed those sort of conversations starting just by the, the name change and yeah, people coming up to you and, and, and asking things? Yeah, I can only go from my own personal experience around even my kids and uh, my friends and the people that I know and the conversations that are driven with them, um, that it has increased awareness and it has driven some conversation. It has brought it right to the forefront of, of our community and I think that's, that's what we wanted to achieve as a footy club and that's what we think we've got a responsibility to do and I think it's been a fantastic initiative.